Welcome again everyone, DC Wood Reviews the Arrowverse and today's episode we cover Supergirl Season 1. Supergirl Season 1 premiered on CBS in the US back on 26th of October 2015 and ran for 20 episodes with a finale airing on 18th of April 2016. The, the pilot episode was an incredible success in the ratings with approximately 13 million viewers tuning in to watch it um, and there was an average viewership of over 9 million a week for the entire season. Um, needless to say this is the highest rated season of the Arrowverse, with the ratings easily trouncing those of Arrow and The Flash. Um, granted, this was all due to Supergirl premiering on CBS, a channel that has a far greater viewership and reach than that of the CW, but this still proved that Supergirl was an amazing hit. Um, despite the success, though, uh, the ratings for Season 1 failed to meet CBS's expectations, and the show moved to the CW to join Arrow, Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow for the 2016-2017 season, where Supergirl has since been allowed to enjoy a much more secure and productive future. Now, we all know the story of Superman, but this is the story of his cousin, who fans may not have known as well as they do that of Kal-El. Um, Kara Zor-El was 13 years old when her home planet of Krypton exploded. She escaped with her baby cousin when her parents put her in a pod of her own, saving her life and charging her with protecting Kal-El upon reaching Earth. But during Krypton's destruction, Kara's pod was knocked off course and she fell into the Phantom Zone, whilst baby Kal-El fell to Earth, and the rest was history. One day, Kara was finally freed from the Phantom Zone and crashed on Earth, only to discover that an adult Kal-El had long assumed the identity of Clark Kent and become Superman. With Kara no longer needed to look after her cousin, she became adopted by Jeremiah Danvers, um, Dean Cain from the old Superman TV series, if you can believe that, and Eliza Danvers, who was Helen Slater in the old Supergirl movie. And as a result, Kara finds herself a sister in their daughter, Alex. Twelve years pass, and Kara with no need to use her powers, has settled into life in National City, working as Cat Grant's personal assistant at Catco Worldwide Media. And then Kara is forced to reveal her powers and existence to the entire world when she has to save an airplane full of passengers from crashing. Now Kara finds herself facing her long-awaited destiny, uh, one she is only too happy and proud to embrace. With Alex by her side and National City calling for a hero of their own, Kara Danvers embraces her new identity as the Girl of Steel. She is Supergirl. Once upon a time, I'd ranked Supergirl Season 1 8th overall. This holds a very special place in my heart this season um, because it's the first show of the Arrowverse I ever checked out. Um, I've always liked the Supergirl character from her appearances in Superman the Animated Series to Justice League Unlimited and her reintroduction to the DC Universe through those brilliant first stories by Jeff Loeb. And um, to hear that Supergirl was getting her own TV series, it piqued my curiosity enough to check it out. And then I started watching Legends of Tomorrow and then Arrow and the Flash. Supergirl Season 1 is a joyous, elating experience. Um, the tone of this show is much lighter, optimistic and radiant than any other superhero show in the 21st century. Yes, you could dismiss this as being cheesy, and there are some elements that are, but so what? I love cheese. I love cheese on toast. I love cheese scones. I love macaroni and cheese. I love cheese and crisps. I love lasagna. I love pizza, etc. As long as the cheese factor isn't overdone, it's delicious. And that's what Supergirl is. Not overdone. Just earnest, honest, uplifting television. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Arrow, I love the Dark Knight trilogy, I love Batman the Animated Series, I love Marvel's Daredevil, and I loved Jessica Jones Season 1. Here's the thing though, I don't want to watch dark, gritty, violent, and 
occasionally depressing television all the time. Sometimes I fancy watching something much lighter and tonally different as a counterbalance. Supergirl fills in that gap very nicely and just because it's different doesn't mean it doesn't deliver. It really does. Um, to start with the presentation, Supergirl Season 1 ticks all the right boxes. Um, the special effects are amazing. Like The Flash when it first started, um, the CGI here is of cinematic quality, especially when you see Kara in action with her powers, the flying, the super strength, the x-ray vision, the heat vision, the freeze breath, etc. Um, the various fight scenes and aliens, all done on a, with cinematic quality. Uh, Blake Neely's score, the man doesn't know how to produce bad music. It's so good. Um, it's the Supergirl theme for this show. It's similar yet different from the Superman theme and reflects the differences and captures the essence of this character. And of course, there's the costume design, the Supergirl suit production. Um, the character has always had an iconic look in the comics and in the, the cartoon. Um, the, the, the S on her chest, the blonde hair, the red cape, red skirt and boots, it's classic, but the costume was in serious danger of being outdated for a 21st century TV show. It would have been so easy to get this wrong, but Colleen Atwood has produced something here that's perfect. Um, Colleen Atwood, as fans know, designed the original Flash outfit for Grant Gustin and the original Arrow costume for Stephen M. Mel. Here, Colleen worked her magic for Melissa Benoist. Um, it's functional, it's not sexualized. It looks fab. It pays homage to the character's roots while suitably toning it down and making it fashionable for the 21st century. It's perfect, so perfect, that this outfit was used unchanged for seasons one to four of Supergirl. And of course, Melissa Benoist wears it with pure grace, strength and inspiration. Um, speaking of Melissa Benoist, it's perfect casting yet again. Like Arrow, like The Flash, Melissa Benoist nails the dual role flawlessly. She has such range and versatility, it's amazing. When Kara smiles, it's so cute and utterly adorable. Whenever she cries, you feel for her so much. You cheer for her whenever she's fighting the good fight. You cheer for her when she's victorious. When she falls down, you root for Kara to get back up and keep fighting. Whenever she's in danger, you feel for her. When she terrifies you, you're genuinely scared of her. Um, to see Kara Danvers grow, struggle, learn, show her potential, prove how genuinely kind, sympathetic, brave, brilliant, loyal and supportive she is, it all showcases that Kara Danvers is just as deep and colourful a character as Clark Kent. Kara gets so much um, amazing development in season one. It's beautiful. You're so engaged in Supergirl's story. It's amazing. And that's mostly down to Melissa being genuinely perfect in the role. Um, like Arrow and The Flash, the main lead has the, su has the supporting cast to match. Uh, there's Kyla Lee, Alex Danvers, uh, Kara's adoptive sister, uh, McCard Brooks, as the Arrowverse's incarnation of a uh, popular Superman character, James Olsen, uh, Jeremy Jordan, uh, Winslow Schlott, uh, Kalista Flockhart as Cat Grant, and David Harewood, Hank Henshaw, mysterious head of the Department of External Operations, aka Jean Jones, the Martian Manhunter himself. Um, all are genuinely perfect in their roles, all are amazing, all are beautifully developed. The most heartfelt moments in season one are definitely between Kara and Alex and Kara and Kat. Um, even though Kara is a Kryptonian and Alex is human, you can truly buy into the fact that they're sisters. There's a genuine bond between them, and Alex is not just one of the greatest original characters in the Arrowverse. She's also one of the best things to have happened to the Supergirl character. Alex is crucial to Kara's story, and vice versa. Their relationship is the heart of the show. Um, Likewise, to see Kat mentor Kara and Supergirl and see herself ultimately change and grow for the better, it's wonderful. And I lost my mind when I saw Henshaw reveal himself as the Martian Manhunter. All this development, these relationships, the sheer characterization is utterly beautiful all round. Um, Story-wise, the pacing of Supergirl season one is fine. 20 episodes, and all in all, it's great. 
Um, the pilot kicks things off to a great start and showcases what heart and potential there is on offer. And there are so many amazing episodes, which to this day still stand as the show's greatest episodes. And the best um, stories in the character's history, frankly. Um, Stronger Together, Live Wire, Human for a Day, um, For the Girl Who Has Everything. That's a beautiful adaptation of the classic Superman tale for the man who has everything. Um, Falling, um, which sees what effect red kryptonite has on Kara. That's the show's darkest and most terrifying episode to this day, and it's a real game changer. World's Finest is an absolutely awesome crossover with The Flash, which sees Grant Gustin pop by and help set things up for Supergirl's proper initiation into the Arrowverse. And then there's the epic myriad Better Angels finale. It all puts Kara and her family in all manner of situations, and the journey is an experience that's truly recommended. The tone of it all makes it ideal for family viewing, just like The Flash. It's wonderful, really wonderful. As much as Supergirl Season 1 gets the show off to a corking start, it doesn't achieve absolute perfection straight away like Aram Flash did with their debut seasons. Um, Supergirl Season 1 is not as consistent as Aram Flash's um, first two seasons, and that brings the, uh, the overall grade down. Um, Supergirl Season 1 also suffers from its initial Villain of the Week format before it changes gears into its... Um, um, main story arc format. Um, speaking of villains, it's disappointing that Supergirl doesn't receive the villains that are worthy of her. Um, there's a, a catalogue of lame villains that are either hokey or one-dimensional. Um, Vartox, Reactron, Red Tornado, Silver Banshee, Bizarro. Um, Maxwell Lord just comes across as a poor man's Lex Luthor. And I was so confused by what side he's meant to be on. He's just too much of an ambiguous character. Um, Indigo, I didn't like the look of Indigo here. She looked as came across as a cheap-looking version of Mystique, um, which is a shame because Laura Vandervoort, who played Kara in Smallville, gives a deliciously evil performance here. Um, then there's none. Uh, played by Chris Vance, who's the main antagonist of season one. He's a, a shallow, poorly developed villain and one of the Arrowverse's worst big bads. The threat of Myriad, the concept behind it all, the end game it represents, that's a great challenge for Supergirl and it makes for an epic finale. But Non doesn't receive sufficient exposition and insight to merit him being the main antagonist for this season. Um, it's a shame because there are some great villains for Supergirl Season 1. Um, Britt Morgan as Leslie Willis Livewire is a fantastic polar opposite for Supergirl and results in some great confrontations in Season 1 and beyond. Um, Henry Cherney delivers a sinister performance of Superman baddie uh, Toy Man. And then there's uh, Laura Benanti, uh, who not only portrays Kara's mother, Alora but Alora's identical twin sister, Astra. Um, Kara's aunt is easily the best villain out of all season one. Astra is tragic, conflicted, driven, deep, and Supergirl's first real arch nemesis. Astra should have been the big bad for this whole season, and then she was prematurely killed off to make way for Non and Indigo, which didn't really work creatively. Um, as visually impressive as Supergirl Season 1 is, the choreography and direction is off in places. Uh, for some of the fight scenes, it's like the production team were trying to get a feel um, for how to do things with all the resources they had. Um, they did rely too much on wire work, in some cases, for fight scenes. And as a result, it looks clumsy. Uh, later on, though, they do get a handle of it, and there are some amazing fight scenes later on um, with Supergirl against the likes of Livewire, Red Tornado, um, the, the second fight she has with Astra in the series, um, the great fight with Martian Manhunter in Falling, and then, of course, um, the fight with uh, Non and Indigo in the finale. And then there's the Love Quadrangle, 
between Kara, James, Wynn and Lucy Lane. This was just terrible. I hate love triangles. Uh, this bizarre love quadrangle was nigh on unbearable. Just tedious, unnecessary drama. When it's finally out of the way, great. So while Supergirl season one may not be absolutely amazing, it nevertheless proves that its heart is in the right place. And that's what won me over and made me love and support the show ever since. Uh, the potential is there in season one and it would eventually be realized. Thanks to a perfect cast, several amazing episodes which still stand to this day as the show's greatest and an absolutely infectious tone overall. Supergirl season one is definitely a case of up, up and away. Overall rating, eight out of 10. Please comment what you guys thought of Supergirl Season 1. Please click like and subscribe. I'll see you again next time for my review of Legends of Tomorrow Season 1. Bye-bye for now.